Hello, in this video we're going to do a quick walkthrough of the temperature converter program that is in your textbook. Um, this program asks the user for a Fahrenheit temperature and it takes that value, computes the equivalent Celsius temperature, and then outputs that value back so that the user can see it. It's a great little program. It gets us acquainted with Visual Studio. Um, basically typing a program that does a simple computation and outputs a value. So currently we're looking at a program that I have copied from, uh, if you're in my class, from the Blackboard course materials folder. Um, and initially we do actually get an error when I paste in this code to a new project. It's something that is important to understand why we would get an error. If I would try to run this program, let's start without debugging right now, I get this message that there's an error. And it says submain was not found um, inside of module one. And if you look carefully, it is because in the textbook, they have renamed the module um, from the default value of module one to temperature. And that's okay. Um, but if you want to change that to temperature, you also have to go into the project properties and change the startup object, this is on the application tab, to temperature. And I'm going to go back to my code. And that removes that particular error. Then I can run the program. See what that looks like. Enter Fahrenheit temperature. The user can type in 32, for example. And it shows us the equivalent Celsius temperature is zero. So the program works and that's how, from the user's perspective, it looks. So either if you get an error such as submain not found, either change the name here to module one, no spaces, or change the project properties as we saw. At the top of this program, the single quotes denote um, comments. Programming comments are for you and I to look at. They're not part of the program. They're not compiled or executed. We also have some compiler directives here. The first option, explicit on, um, ensures that variables must be declared before they are uh, used within a program. And option strict on forces the compiler to be a little more strict when we're working with data types. Um, the author basically suggests that both of these are on. So we go ahead and turn those on. And as in most of our beginning programs, the code for our program is inside of submain. Submain is a special uh, block of code that is executed by default whenever we start the program. So this code that I'm highlighting in between represents the bulk of our program and the logic that is executed line by line sequentially when we start the program. So a lot of our programs you'll see start with variable declarations. So here we are defining uh, three variables. And remember, variables are just named memory locations. So they enable us to store a value throughout the duration of our running program so that we can refer to it throughout our program. So we're going to ask the user for a Fahrenheit temperature. So we need a spot to store that temperature. So we create a variable called Fahrenheit. Uh, that's up to you, those names, but we usually choose a name that's descriptive as the data type double indicates that it's going to be a number that could potentially store a decimal point. So 32.2 is an acceptable value for a Fahrenheit. We also create a variable for Celsius because remember this program is going to calculate the equivalent Celsius temperature from Fahrenheit. And again, we're going to need a spot to store that value. So we create a variable for that. Uh, this one up here at the top, um, Fahrenheit string. This is an intermediate variable that we use for reading in the user's initial input. In, in just moments, we're going to ask the user to enter a Fahrenheit temperature. And when they do so, that value, even though they've typed, for example, 3.2, the numeric 3.2, it's going to be read into our program as text. And uh, a text is just string, the data type string in Visual Basic we ask the user for a Fahrenheit temperature. So here we see that in lines 15 and 16, and I would like to point out that um, these are broken apart with two uh, different physical lines. Uh, this could really just be one line. The book did it, I think, just because of 
um, the desire to you know, uh, fit on a page, but you could certainly put this just on one line. So here, input box is going to uh, pop up that little box we saw when we ran the program and display the message that you've indicated in between parentheses. Note the message must be in uh, quotes because this um, expects to receive a string representing the message that the user is going to see. So since we're asking for Fahrenheit temperature, that's what we have between the quotes. And uh, the right-hand side of uh, assignment statement always executes first. So it's going to do this first, pop up the box, and wait for the user to type in a value. Once the user types in that value, uh, it assigns that value to the variable indicated on the left-hand side of the equal sign. So essentially, line 15 of this program says, set Fahrenheit string equal to uh, the result of input box. In other words, what the user is going to type in. And I had said, it, you know, initially that input is going to be a uh, text. It's going to be string, but we need to get it as a number so we can do uh, a little bit of arithmetic with it. So the next step is to convert that string to a double. For that, we can use the conversion method to double. Convert that to double takes an argument in between parentheses indicating what is it we're trying to convert. Well, we want to convert the variable we just assigned the value to. So this says convert to a double Fahrenheit string and that result, that value then, assigned to the variable Fahrenheit. So after line 17 is executed, now our Fahrenheit variable is populated with a real value that the user typed in. So our next step will be, okay, we have our Fahrenheit, now let's calculate our Celsius. So we have another assignment statement down here that says set Celsius equal to, and then on the right hand side, we see an expression that represents how you calculate Fahrenheit from Celsius. And this was given to us in the program um, description. It says basically you take Fahrenheit minus 32 times 5 ninths. And to do so, we notice we're using our um, asterisk for multiplication and our forward slash for division. So we're applying the operators that uh, we've, we've been introduced to here to do that calculation for Celsius. Finally, after this point, uh, after line 19 completes, Celsius is calculated and has a value. So for example, if the user had typed in 32 for Fahrenheit, Celsius now holds the value of zero for the equivalent temperature for 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So now all that's left is to output the result to the user. In other words, print the value so the user can see it. So the way we do that is we use console.writeLine. Console.writeLine writes out some text um, and values to the command prompt screen so the user can see the answer, basically. And again, uh, the textbook from which I copied this broke these into two separate physical lines. Um, I tend to like it on one line here, so you could certainly bring this up to the line ahead of it. It's just a little bit easier to read in my opinion, but either way, they're functionally the same. So let's take a look. System.Council.WriteLine, by the way, that can be shortened to just Council.WriteLine. You'll see that in some of your examples. Um, takes an, in between parentheses an argument that represents what it is we want to write out. Well, what we'd like to write out is some text. We'd like to say Fahrenheit temperature colon but then after that, we don't want to type in 32 because if the user had typed in 51 for Fahrenheit, we want it to read 51. So we can't write a number here. Instead, we need to reference the variable that's going to hold the number. So here, when we type in Fahrenheit and we reference that variable by name, what happens is it replaces that reference with the actual value of Fahrenheit. Notice this part is not in quotes. And the ampersand in between here is what's called a concatenation operator. Basically glues these two pieces together. So we have a cohesive um, output line that says Fahrenheit temperature and then the actual value of that temperature. And we use exactly the same technique down here when we're writing out the Celsius temperature. So once again, if we run this program, 
and we, um, you know, write out our 51 degrees Fahrenheit. I now have my user hat on and I'm typing in 51 for the value. It shows me that the equivalent Celsius temperature is 10.55555. Very long um, on the right hand side of that decimal point, a little on the messy side. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to X out of the running program and show you a technique for rounding out that value. There actually is a uh, method called round in the math class that we can use to round out Celsius to a given number of uh, places after the decimal point. So for example, if I want to round out Celsius to two positions after the decimal before I display that value, instead of just Celsius in this highlighted portion, I replaced it with math.round and then in parentheses here, what is it I'm trying to round, comma, and to how many positions, end parentheses. So this highlighted portion here, I've replaced the word Celsius with this highlighted portion. This will give me the rounded version of Celsius. So if I run it again, move my window over here so you can see it, um, with 51, we now see a nicely rounded out temperature 10.56.